Denmark's capital, Copenhagen is by far the largest city in the country. Here, you'll find a multitude of tourist attractions to please even the pickiest of travelers. For instance, the Parliament at Christiansborg, familiar to many through the Danish smash hit TV series, Borgen, and the residents of the royal family at Amalienborg are unmissable. Arguably Scandinavia's most relaxed capital city, Copenhagen has a distinctly European feel, a friendly street life, and unique cafe culture that will make you want to return time and time again. The city is perfect for wandering through at your leisure, or alternatively, make like a local and hop on a bike, the preferred mode of transport for many. Let's explore the best places to visit in Copenhagen. 1. Stragit Stragit is the most popular shopping street in Copenhagen. It's one of the largest pedestrianized malls in the world, stretching over 1.1 kilometers through the heart of the city. There are a lot of shops here, especially high-end luxury brands. Stragit's pedestrianization in 1962, for example, had a significant impact on Copenhagen's culture and led to more pedestrian-only access throughout the city. And it wasn't just in Copenhagen that this idea caught on. Pedestrian and bicycle-only access has become increasingly popular around the world. If you're on a budget, as Copenhagen can be pricey, this is the best place to window shop. If you have a lot of money, there are a lot of things you can buy with it, from international clothing brands to Danish design pop-ups. But that's not all. When you need a quick bite to eat, there are plenty of restaurants, bars, and cafes to choose from. During the warmer months, street performers such as acrobats, musicians, and magicians entertain the visitors and pedestrians passing by. 2. Nyhaven When you stroll through Nyhaven's waterfront district, you'll feel as if you've been transported back to the 17th century. Nyhaven is a laid-back destination for an afternoon visit, and one of the top things to do in Copenhagen, lined with brightly colored houses and shops. The old wooden ships, many of which were built between the 1800s and 1900s, can still be seen bobbing in the harbor. You'll enjoy a few hours in the quaint Nyhaven neighborhood, whether you're coming to walk the canal promenade or stopping by after visiting the Veteran Ship Museum. Grab a coffee or a mid-morning brunch at one of the delightful cafeterias in the neighborhood. You might be able to get a window seat with a view of the harbor. If you can't, take a walk along the waterfront and look at the old wooden ships that still float in the canal. Also, don't miss the houses numbered 18, 20, and 67. Between 1845 and 1864, author Hans Christian Andersen lived in several different homes. 3. Rosemore Castle Stop by Rosemore Castle, one of Copenhagen's most famous attractions, for a taste of luxury. The castle, which was originally built as Christian for summer residence in the 1600s, is now a stunning example of Dutch Renaissance architecture. While the building's stone exterior is impressive in and of itself, it is what lies within that is truly memorable. There are a few places in the castle that you should not miss while touring it. The first is the Long Hall, which served as a ballroom and royal reception room in the past. The regal, coronation chair is at the far end of the hall, where many of the country's kings and queens would sit and reign. The Rosemore Collections, a museum of artifacts and objects from Danish royal history, is included in a visit to the castle. Many of the items, including 17th-century Venetian glass, dinnerware, and even the crown jewels, belong to the kings and queens themselves. After that, relax in Denmark's largest and oldest garden, Rosemore Castle Gardens. 4. Freetown Christiania Visit Freetown Christiania, a small commune in Copenhagen, for one of the most unusual things to do in Copenhagen. It was founded in a deserted military zone in the 1970s and now has around 850 residents, is a symbol of progressive and liberal Danish culture. Freetown Christiania's favorite activities include meditation, farming, and yoga. Locals have even devised their own set of guidelines, separate from the federal government's. Pusher Street is a popular tourist destination in Freetown Christiania. Many shop stalls and stands sell hash and marijuana in this area. While marijuana is not technically legal, the Danish government has openly permitted marijuana sales for the past 15 years. Freetown Christiania, Copenhagen's fourth most popular attraction, is a slice of alternative, liberal, and laid-back paradise that can't be found anywhere else. If you're backpacking through Copenhagen, this is a must-see. 5. The Town Hall Square the Town Hall, or Radisplatzen, is one of Copenhagen's most popular and well-known attractions. 
Copenhagen's main square, Artisplatzen, is simply known as Copenhagen Town Hall Square. It was constructed in an Italian Renaissance style with Danish influences, which was popular at the time. A large ornate world clock created by Jens Olsen, one of the world's foremost clockmakers, can be found on the main tower of the town hall. The main town hall's facade is ornate, with finely detailed work created by local designers and craftsmen. The Redesplatzen is a great place to be in the moment, take some photos, or simply sit in a cafeteria on the square and take in the sights and people. The square is a popular gathering place in the city for political, social, and large-scale entertainment events. Make sure to look around this famous Copenhagen attraction for all of the fantastical details when you visit. In the center is a fantastic fantasy dragon fountain, which features three large dragons in various poses surrounding a bronze basin, providing a marvelous and innovative look at Danish artistry and design in the early 1920s. 6. The Little Mermaid and Castellet You can't visit Copenhagen without seeing the Little Mermaid, so stroll along the waterfront from Nyhaven to Castellet, less than 2 kilometers, and take in the iconic statue and its surroundings. Many boat tours pass by the mermaid, but seeing it from the ground provides a much better perspective. The oldest parts of Castellet, the former Frederikshavn Citadel, date from 1625. The Citadel's buildings are well kept and worth visiting. The official emblem of Copenhagen is the Little Mermaid, which you can see from the shore. The bronze sculpture, created by Edvard Eriksson in 1913, is based on a theme from one of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales, in which a mermaid emerges from the depths of the sea after falling in love with a prince. She was forced to leave the human world and return to the sea because the prince did not reciprocate. You won't be able to get up close to the mermaid herself, who is perched on rocks just offshore, but there are plenty of excellent photo opportunities in front of her. 7. Amalian Borg Roseborg Sister Palace and its green waterfront gardens are less than one and a half kilometers from Rosemorg in the Frederiksteden Quarter. The four palaces facing the square were originally built as homes for the nobility, but after a fire at Christiansborg in 1794, they were taken over by the royal family. The palace was named after Queen Sophia Malley, who had a lavish summer retreat on the site that was also destroyed by fire in 1689. The area was planned to be a model society, with the king as the focal point and the aristocracy, the four palaces surrounding him. The upper story of Christian IX Palace now houses Queen Margaret II and her family. While the Molke Palace is used for official meetings, the royal guard with their bearskins and blue uniforms, or red, white, and blue uniforms on festive occasions, are a unique symbol of the city. 8. Tivoli Gardens Copenhagen's Tivoli Gardens can be a thrilling amusement for the whole family, with excitement and adventure around every corner. It is the world's second oldest amusement park, having opened in 1843. Tivoli Gardens is Europe's go to destination for rides, concerts, games, and good old fashioned fair food, with 4.6 million visitors each year. It was even used as a model and inspiration for Walt Disney's Disneyland. We hope you're ready for an action packed day because Tivoli Gardens has plenty of things to do. There are dozens of rides for adults and children, but none are as thrilling as the 1914 wooden roller coaster and Rutschebanen. Apart from rides, visitors can enjoy free pantomime shows, live music, and a stroll through the on-site aquarium. The park also hosts a number of events and concerts, such as ballet performances, jazz festivals, and marching band performances. 9. Christiansborg Palace Many of the public and administrative halls in Christiansborg's main palace are open to the public. The palace, which served as the seat of Imperial Denmark, still has many of its magnificent royal halls, which the Queen still uses for state dinners and events. The royal stables, the underground ruins of earlier medieval castles, the palace chapel, and the court theater are all included in the admission price. Beautiful porcelain, tapestries, artwork, Statues, chandeliers, and other richly decorated ornaments can be found inside the palace. The palace is also a functioning government building that houses all three branches of the Danish government, the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The palace has served as the seat of central administration and the current Danish parliament since the early 15th century. It is the world's only government building that houses all of the government's branches in one impressive structure. 10. The Round Tower The Round Tower, completed in 1642 and located a few blocks north of Stragit in downtown Copenhagen, 
is one of the city's many landmarks built during King Christian IV's reign in the 17th century. The tower was built to serve as an astronomy observatory, and it still does so in some capacity. But it is best known for its spectacular city views. The library hall, an exhibition space, and a music venue are also located within the building. Visitors describe this tower as an architectural marvel, praising its sunset views in particular. However, if you're out of shape, the climb to the top might be a little difficult.